the death of author Anne Rice was announced last week in a post on social media. Her son, Christopher Rice, an author himself, said Anne Rice passed away due to complications resulting from a stroke. He said he sat beside her hospital bed in awe of her accomplishments and her courage. Many actors, authors and fans shared their condolences with the family on social media. Actress Tandue Newton posted a tweet and said, Rice's work will always be part of my personal journey. Editor Victoria Wilson, who worked with Rice for a long time, said Rice was decades ahead of her time. American writer, artist and academic Audrey Niefenegger called Rice's famed novel Interview with a Vampire a masterpiece. But not all the critics would agree with these comments, especially back in 1976, when Anne Rice's first book, Interview with the Vampire, was published. There were harsh reviews saying the book had poor storytelling and underdeveloped characters. In an interview with the New York Times in 1990, Rice said, What matters to me is that people know that my books are serious and that they're meant to make a difference and that they're meant to be literature. Interview with the Vampire made a splash in popular culture. The book featuring a solitary vampire who's telling his life story to a reporter kicked off a vampire revival. It was turned into a 13-part series. The book sold 80 million copies worldwide. It was adapted in 1994 into a movie starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Now it's set to turn into a new TV series for AMC. Although Anne Rice wrote fiction in different genres, the vampire theme stayed constant. Her son says Rice used vampires as a metaphor for people who were shunned by society for a variety of reasons. Perhaps this is why Rice's book has made an impact way beyond the niches of the gothic genre, causing a sensation in popular culture and arguably leaving its mark on literary history. And then he took the light of day. Stacey Abbott is here with us. She is a reader in film and television studies at the University of Roehampton. Hi there. Good to have you with us today. Thanks so much for taking the time. So, um, you specialize in vampires and zombies uh, in particular. So, I want to ask, do you see Anne Rice as part of popular culture or uh, serious literary history. I'm not sure about this dichotomy, but still, I want to hear your take on it. She's become a major figure in popular culture. Her uh, Vampire Chronicles are have huge readership and a huge fandom. But I also think that she has made a lasting impact on Gothic literature. That means that she will um, stand the test of time in the way of, of great literature. Okay, let's break it down. You said that uh, she had a lasting impact on Gothic literature. I want to come back to that later. Do you think that well, critics dismissed her writing as just popular culture sometimes? Because we know that she was sort of reactionary to that. Yes, I mean, I think often it happens with people who write about um, in genre work in Gothic. I mean, some of the great lit literary works that we um, see as great literature today were treated as pulp fiction and i think often it gets dismissed as that uh, but i think you know it has you know resonated with audiences so i think increasingly popular critics have um embraced her but at the same time she also you know didn't want to conform to expectations of her so she worked across a range of types of, of work from erotic fiction to genre fiction to christian literature and uh, she was very much a woman of her own mind to write what she wanted to write and what meant something to her and why do you think her work uh, resonated with the audiences this much I think be largely because um, she made the very conscious choice to tell her stories from the point of view of monsters, um, vampires, mummies, werewolves. And they, these monsters are often treated as outsiders. But I think as she started to write, more people recognized that they identified with outsiders or often felt like an outsider. And so they were more inclined to sympathize with monsters than with the kind of heroes that we were traditionally told that we should identify with. Okay, well, I said that I would come back to her, you know, lasting impact on Gothic literature. But I'm just sensing maybe you came back to that point anyways now. So what you said <laughs> about, uh, you know, how uh, 
we looked at literature from the monster's uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. Is this her uh, contribution, her lasting impact on uh, the genre? I think it's definitely one of them. I think it's that she decided to um, provide this perspective and through that perspective, um, invites the reader to engage in a very morally complicated world, to, to like and fall in love with these characters in many respects, but while always recognizing how monstrous they are, always recognizing how, um, how the, the kind of bad things they do, and therefore inviting us to kind of engage with a very morally complicated landscape and think through our own morality as we, as they, along with these characters who are themselves confronting the evil they do and yet the um, aspirations they have to be better. And you mentioned uh, how people who felt like the outsiders sort of identified with Anne Rice's work. In that sense, would it be too much to say that her work had some sort of a political power? I think it did, definitely, particularly at the time she started writing. She started writing in the 1970s, you know, in the wake of a lot of um, global change, you know, youth movements, people f wanting to express and diversify identity. And I think she very much was at the vanguard of that, using fiction to explore the complexities of identity in ways that we're still dealing with today, um, in recognizing that identity isn't something that is straightforward and that everyone sort of negotiates that for themselves. So I think she was definitely, I think there is a kind of political reading to what she's doing. And exploring complexities of identity, is this, would you say, what she was trying to do uh, with her writings all along? She would probably say she was trying to do lots of different things. Um, I think that's definitely one aspect of what she was trying to do. Um, she also, when she first started writing, um, had experienced great um, personal trauma. And I think she was also trying to exercise a lot of her own grief and mourning. Um, and I think so I think at different points in her life, she was dealing with different using her her characters to explore different aspects of what she was going through. So when she wrote her first book, she had undergone a kind of personal law, family loss and negotiated that. By the time she wrote The Vampire Lestat, which is a very different styled novel, she was um, in a much happier place, in a much better place personally, and it comes across in a novel which is much more of a, a kind of celebration of existence. Um, so you can sort of see her shifting and changing, um, and also her own um, religious beliefs and moral beliefs. So as she got later in her life, she returned to her own kind of Christian upbringing and and was kind of exploring a lot of those ideas in some in her later work. Vampire Chronicles, uh, more than a dozen books, I guess, uh, in all, are widely yeah. credited with um, fueling a revival of interest in all things vampiric. Do you think it is just another, you know, pop culture uh, tag on Anne Rice's work, or do you really believe that it fueled a change or it fueled this, uh, sparked this interest? It was definitely part of a change. Um, you know, as I say, you know, in the 70s and 80s, there was a, a renewed interest in the vampires. Vampires have never gone anywhere. They always have an element of popularity, but the success of her novels brought them to a much bigger, broader audience. So I think that they definitely, definitely contributed to that. And I would, I would credit the success of, of her Vampire Chronicles with, um, movements in television. A lot of authors that came after her may have struggled to get their work published if, so, if she hadn't shown the kind of global popularity of the genre, um, particularly in relation to kind of gothic romance, which obviously triggered works like the series of books, The Vampire Diaries or Twilight, um, but even to television series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All right, we don't have much time left, but um, anyone who's watching us right now and who, of course, heard the name of Anne Rice, uh, but then, you know, haven't read any of her work, where should they start? I would say start at the beginning. I would, I would recommend starting with vamp the, the, the initial trilogy of the Vampire Chronicles. So I would start with Interview the Vampire, Vampire Lestat and the Queen of the Damned. 
um, they are really, it's a very coherent story she's telling through those three books. All right, Stacey Abbott, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I really appreciate your time. <laughs>